I was 15, I wanted to go to India. And there was a program with Girl Scouts called Destinations, and I applied to go, and I got accepted. I flew partially there by myself. I had an hour and a half flight all by myself, first time on a plane ever. Um, that was a little scary. The level of poverty is different. We have poverty, but and, and you see it, but in other places it's, it's just so much more. You have more people living in the streets, you have more people um, not wearing clothes or wearing clothes that are covered in, in holes and dirt. It's really more overwhelming. We were not allowed to go around in our Girl Scout uniforms because they were afraid that we might be targets of um, terrorist attacks, which you know didn't happen, but it could have happened. Being respectful of other people in countries like that, it's, it's not very difficult to do. One of the things that we did was we would cover our shoulders and our knees. I went there probably about roughly six months after the Mumbai bombings. So we got to go by and, you know, and see the destroyed train station. And, you know, seeing something like that is kind of scary, but I can't only imagine what it would have been like if I was actually there. Um, when I was in Iceland, I found out the day after we arrived that um, about 70 or so kids were just point blank murdered um, in Norway, and that was just, it was devastating to hear that something like that happened in a place where you, you just don't think that would happen. I've been to India, I've been to England and Iceland, and I think the best part would be meeting the people and experiencing the culture, because it's so different from ours. Going to Haiti in August, my check bag had um, deflated soccer balls, uh, had three of those. My whole carry-on suitcase was filled with school supplies and I actually weighed it, it weighed more than my check bag, it was about 40 pounds. I had probably about 20 to 30 books at the time, about four or five reams of paper. I think about 20 different boxes of colored pencils and scissors and tons of books. It was really inspiring for me personally, going to India and being able to connect with people and help them, so that when I got to Haiti, I kind of already had the skills I needed to meet up with people and talk to them. Even if I didn't speak any Creole or any French, which I don't at all, we could communicate with, you know, hand gestures and things like that. Before we went out to the job site, we were actually taught some of the songs that they would sing at the work site. Because apparently in Haiti it's very popular when you're working that, um, to sing because it helps it go along faster, and it did. As we were singing one of the Haitian freedom songs, we would randomly start bursting out into other songs because we couldn't remember one of the lines, so we'd start singing Disney songs. And then the kids that were helping us that were um, living in the village would try to copy us. We were teaching each other through correction and moving rocks. Singing songs with people, it's just kind of, it lifts up your spirit and it makes you kind of feel empowered and strong. And I just felt very connected with people when we were all, you know, singing together. It makes it seem very powerful. Hopefully, uh, at the end of January, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to go to a camp called Camp Oasis for girls that have been orphaned by the earthquake. And the only way they would have been able to support themselves was eventually by resorting to prostitution. I'm hoping to set up a resource center um, with books and feminine products for the girls. People can help me by um, donating books in French or um, even gift cards for books if they'd like. Only 10% of the population in Haiti actually speaks fluent French, and the problem is that all of the newspapers and radio stations and everything like that is in French. So if they don't know the French, then they don't know what's going on in their government. I'm hoping to kind of establish a sense of, I don't know, I guess hope, I guess would be a good way to put it, because it'll teach the girls that they don't have to rely on somebody else, they, they can rely on themselves. It's kind of a sense of empowerment when you realize, oh, I can read. It kind of starts the, oh, I can do something else. 
I can go to school. I can have whatever job I want. I'm looking for books like Harry Potter or Chronicles of Narnia, um, anything like teenage, interesting, adventure books, something that you would want to read. These girls are basically like us, but they don't speak English. So whatever you would want to read is what they're going to want to read. Well, I'd love to have like uh, over 500 books, but however many I can get donated or collect myself would be great. Well, they're a little difficult to find. Uh, I have seen some, however, online, places like Amazon and eBay, um, and sometimes uh, used bookstores will have some. I just received my first copy um, in the mail um, anonymously. First Harry Potter book, it's in French, I'm not exactly sure what it says, and it's very exciting. When I turn 18 in the spring, I'm going to set up a nonprofit organization called HIPPO, which stands for Helping Initiate Powerful and Positive Opportunities. I need um, a, a lawyer or an attorney um, to do some pro bono work for me to help set up the nonprofit. I have come to realize that it's not that people do not want to learn, it's that they don't have the resources or the opportunities to learn. So if you give them the tools that they need, hopefully that will help them learn. Well, I just like to help people and I always have. And so now this is kind of my big opportunity to get out there and really do something that I feel passionate about. And I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to at least try and hopefully succeed at doing this.